blood product management. And when I say our journey, I really mean that. It's been a journey with our perfusionists, my associates who are cardiac surgeons, our administration, and, and we've really gained a lot of uh, uh, experience with this over the last uh, 10 or 12 years. Um, this is a grant supported by Hemanetics. <clears throat> uh, this is a picture of our most recent uh, hospital uh, acquisition, a 13-story bed tower, which has two wings. And uh, we now have the capacity for over 1,000 patients at Toledo Hospital. These are my disclosures. Um, and we want to talk about the virtual symposium that we're having this year. And I, I found this commercial, uh, this little cartoon from Peanuts um, about, you know, what surprises you most about the coronavirus and canceled all sports, shut down bars and kept men at home. And, uh, you know, this is something that's not ever been able to be done before. So when we talk about TAG, I want to talk about why, when, and where we started as a group. I want to talk about what TAG is and what is its value. Um, we did an early study looking at complex cases and the impact that those cases had, the financial impact of TAG, and then finally a little bit about the longitudinal status of TAG within Toledo Hospital and our practice. Going back to approximately 2009 or 10, our perioperative, perioperative coagulation management was, you know, somewhat uh, probably same in most institutions, but um, really some of, a, some of a shock and approach. We had the preoperative prothrombin time, partial thromboplastin time, and platelet count as our only real management. After bypass, we did an ACT, and then it was the surgeon's clinical judgment that entered into it. Finally, if the patient was felt to be coagulopathic, we would blindly administer additional protamine based on the ACT. We would blindly transfuse every time two units of FFP, 10 units of platelets, and 10 units of cryoprecipitate. And if the coagulopathy or the bleeding persisted, we would repeat this transfusion. Needless to say, there were issues and problems with this. It was a non-directed approach. As I said before, it's a shotgun approach that we weren't happy with. There was no way to accurately determine if the treated coagulopathy resolved, or we still had unrecognized surgical bleeding, leading to further transfusions. Large blood product volumes were transfused, and again, adversely, infected, adversely affected the lungs, kidney, and ultimately the heart. And this increased morbidity and mortality as a consequence of these excessive transfusions. So after a little head scratching and some research, we decided on TAG or thromboelastography. Now, thromboelastography is an old process. It's been around for almost 50 or 60 years. And in 2009, we started the investigation into both TAG and Rotem and specifically decided to go with TAG. We purchased the machines in 2010 and had our initial shakedown and education of both our perfusionists and training, and then also of the surgeons, which was just as important. We did a full clinical Im implementation of 2011 and we're up and running by then. Over the last eight years, we've done nearly 15,000 total TAG procedures and we've done over 2,000 platelet mapping operate procedures. So these are what the machines look like. This is the TAG 5000 is the one we currently use and Hemanetics now has another one out the, S, the 6S. We had, we'd have minimal experience with this, but what really is TAG? Basically it equals thromboelastography. It is a global assessment of coagulation that is repeatable and you can do it in serial fashion. It identifies the risks of bleeding, thrombosis and fibrinolysis and identifies and quantifies individual blood component, therapy, blood, component, blood component therapy that's required for an individual patient. And probably most importantly, it's a point of care assay. It's done in the operating rooms for real time and real turnover. So it, it, it happens quickly. You don't have to send it to the lab if you don't want to. Our TEG machines reside in our pump room, which sits right between our four cardiac surgery ORs at the Toledo Hospital. How does it work? A small aliquot of blood is placed in a, in a cup. The cup oscillates and a pin binds to the cup. When the pin senses clot formation, it generates a clot. It generates a graft, and the graft is then recognized and read. This is a typical 
tag, normal tag tracing right here. What we read from this on the left-hand side is the R portion, the enzymatic portion. This is the need for usually fresh frozen plasma or additional protamine. As the curve starts to split, we see a need for fibrinogen. This is called the angle, and often cryoprecipitate is the indication here when this is low. As the curve dilates to its maximal amplitude, or MA, this is indicative of platelet function and need for platelets. Then finally, if the curve does not stay separated and deteriorates again, it's indicative of clot lysis and the need for potentially amicar or transoxamic acid. All these things are helpful to the surgeon and to the perfusionist in the course of interpreting, interpreting patient reactions. And more importantly, it can be done in a serial fashion, after bypass, half an hour after bypass, two hours after bypass, whatever the indication is. Now our team members have been the cardiac surgeons, the perfusionists, anesthesiologists, our clinical laboratory services, and more importantly, our hospital administration who's funded all this. And specifically, I'd like to give a shout out to our team that works in the trenches every day. Um, our perfusionists are all superstars. We have myself and my partners who work in this operating room every day, and also our auto transfusionists who also help with these procedures. So the specific keys to success for TAG have been that it's done in the ORs for real-time assessment. It's not sent to a lab, it's not sent to another building, it's immediately done, and it can be, again, repeatable and serial and done in a serial fashion. The physicians have to buy in. That's been a problem. Some anesthesiologists don't use it, some use it, some use it well, some don't use it, some surgeons believe in it, some others don't. And you don't wanna save it just for your disaster cases, you wanna use it all the time and consistently. Every patient that goes through the operating room in Toledo Hospital for cardiac surgery gets a tag before and after a bypass. It's important to have a well-trained staff to operate and interpret the tag. You have to work closely with the hospital laboratory and you have to do both calibration and cue quality control on a daily basis. Now, recently in last year, in uh, April of last year, we published a major paper in Annals the surgery, detailing our early uh, results and post-operative outcomes with the use of TAG um, at our hospital. We did a comparison of perioperative and post-operative blood use and the early impact of TAG. We looked at a group of patients which we thought would be the most dramatic and most um, significant in demonstrating how TAG has helped us. And we looked at complex cases. Specifically, there were patients that underwent multiple valve procedures, valve cabbage procedures, aortic root, and aortic arch replacements. It was a retrospective analysis which totaled 681 patients. In the pre-TAG era, it was 2008 to 2009, 367 patients were identified. And in the post-TAG era, 311 patients were identified. Minimally invasive and circa arrest cases were excluded. Specifically, we looked at the perioperative and postoperative blood product utilization. We looked at the clinical outcomes for surgical re-exploration, length of stay, readmission, and six-month mortality. Finally, we looked at the comparison of hospital costs specific to blood acquisition costs and projected overall hospital costs and charges savings. Now, during this complex study, this complex case study, we looked at this, the same, we looked at all the factors that could change. We had the same three experienced surgeons, the same six experienced perfusionists. We had transfusion triggers which were identical throughout the study. And the perfusion equipment, namely the oxygenators, pump circuits, were consistent throughout the entire study. When we looked at mean component blood use, mean units transfused. We saw that red cell use was down 20%. And again, this is before TAG, 2008 to 2009, compared to after TAG, 2011, 2012. FFP use was down 68%. Cryoprecipitate use was down 81%. And platelet use was down approximately 2.5%.
For red cells, FFP, and cryo, this was highly statistically significant. We looked at the total component blood product use of a hospitalization per patients. Again, before TAG, we saw a 28%, almost 29% drop in blood, red blood cell use, a 67% drop in FFP use, an 80% drop in cryoprecipitate use, and a 5% drop in platelet use before and after TAG. For blood cells, FFP and cryo, again, highly statistically significant. Then we looked at <clears throat> the reduction by time period. Specifically, the first 24, the OR in the first 24 hours, after 48 hours, and then over the entire hospitalization. Where will we transfusing patients? <clears throat> we looked for the first for the operating room in the first 24 hours, we saw literally a three-unit reduction in transfusion components. We saw a one-unit reduction after 48 hours, and for the entire hospitalization we saw nearly a four unit reduction overall. Again, all of these time periods demonstrated a highly statistical significant difference compared to the pre and post tag eras. So when we looked at this, mean units of red cells, FFP and cryo were all statistically reduced. Platelet use was reduced by 11%, but it was not statistically significant. Overall blood product use was statistically reduced by 40%, in both pre and perioperative periods, and for the entire hospitalization, again, highly statistically significant. And patient exposure to allergenic transfusions was significantly reduced throughout the entire study period. We next looked at the clinical outcomes, reoperation, length of stay, readmission and mortality, and the impact of TAG in these two time periods, before and after TAG. When we looked at re-expiration for bleeding before TAG and after TAG, we had literally a 50% fall off in our re-expirations for bleeding, highly statistically significant. The length of stay was reduced by approximately 1.3 days, statistically significant. Readmission rates were not significantly changed. And when a multivariate analysis was done on six, on six month mortality, this was highly statistically significant with a reduction. Now, the TEG itself didn't reduce mortality. What happened is, is we just transfused more, less, excuse me, transfused less, and consequently, we had better outcomes. When we looked at the financial impact of TEG, again, in the two time periods, we looked at the acquisition costs of blood products. We looked at the real cost of blood products, what the charges are. We looked at the costs and charges for reoperations for bleeding and the costs and charges for additional length of stay days. Now for this specific talk, we're just gonna talk about acquisition costs of blood products and the real cost of blood product charges. When you look at this, this is kind of a pretty much a gray area. Costs and charges, charges and costs. The actual real dollars for costs and charges in hospital accounting has always been a really a black box in a gray area. It's very difficult to nail down specific numbers. But a very reasonable assumption is, is that costs equal approximately 15 to 25% of charges. And that's the assumption that we're gonna move forward with on this cost analysis. We looked at the financial impact of TAG <clears throat> on a cost and charges basis. Packed red blood cells, fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate, and platelets all, again, we're in this 15 to 25% cost versus charges ratio. When we looked at the complex cases, the, the different cohorts, and then looked at the different cost per patient, we found that we saved approximately $716 per patient. When we looked at it in terms of the entire cohort of patients for complex cases, we saved $360,000 for the two groups before and after TAG. So the cost savings per patient would again was $716. The cost savings for the study group was $363,000. If you extrapolate the blood product cost savings 
from 2011 to 2019, we believe we saved just in cost acquisitions $1.6 million on this one facet of our patient population. And when you look at the charges, this was a very different number. And you might say, well, charges and costs, the hospital cares about costs, the payers and the insurance companies care about charges. Average blood product savings and charges per patient was approximately $4,000. For the study group, we saved approximately $1.5 million. And if you extrapolate blood product savings and charges over seven years, we believe we saved nearly $12 million in charges. We then wanted to look at the longitudinal impact of TAG at our hospital. And specifically what we mean by that is, did we learn anything? Did we continue to do well? Did we improve with our use of TAG over time? So we looked at a study cohort. Our baseline patient group was 1,049 patients from 2008 to 2009. And then after implementation of TAG, we had almost 3,900 patients. Excluded specifically were all the 2010 cases, the circulatory arrest cases, and minimally invasive and off-pump cases. And this is the breakdown of how it broke out. Approximately 50% were pure coronaries, complex cases were a third, isolated valves were approximately 17%. But we have a database here now of almost 5,000 patients, 4,900 patients, which is really fairly powerful and gives us tremendous statistic power. When we looked at blood product exposure, Again, note that the 2010 year is out, but we see this line generated, percentage of patients. It went from about 75% down to approximately 40% in 2018. And if you look at the trend line, it's highly statistically significant over time in the pre-TEG era versus the post-TEG era. When we looked at post-operative transfusions as broken down by specific blood products, Red blood cells dropped dramatically. Platelets dropped significantly. FFP dropped significantly. And cryoprecipitate dropped significantly. All of these different blood product curves were highly statistically significant relative to the pre-TAG era versus the post-TAG era. Finally, we looked at reoperations. Again, 2010 is out of here because it was our ramp up year. And when we looked at this, we saw this curve get generated. And this is a linear curve representing, representing how our overall reoperations have gone. And basically, we've cut them in half over the last 10 years. And we blame TAG for a lot of it, so to speak. Again, highly statistically significant. So we have multiple conclusions from our different studies and our new studies. It provides a global all, TAG provides a global all coagulation overview. It specifically directs blood product component therapy and secondary protamine requirements. The keys to success, located in the OR and performed by an, excellent, an expert perfusion staff. There's gotta be physician buy-in or it's a $30,000 paperweight. We've demonstrated a significant reduction in overall blood product transfusions and blood product and blood transfusion exposure to patients, significant reduction in reoperations, length of stay, and, and six month mortality. We've had significant reductions in cost and charges savings from blood product acquisition, reoperations, and reduction in length of stay. And it's estimated from 2011 to 2009, Toledo Hospital cost and charges savings from TAG are in excess of $45 million. Since 2011, we demonstrate continued significant improvement in the transfusion rates of all blood product components, patient blood exposure rates, and reoperations for TAG. The role of TAG in these accomplishments cannot be understated and establishes, in my opinion, a new standard of care in cardiac surgery. 
The real question is, why are you not using TAG? I'd like to thank everyone for the opportunity and also Hemanetics for this sponsorship of this lecture. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions at this time.